Kia ora te whānau, ai hukaraiti. Today we are looking at the Gospel text for Sunday the 20th of August and it's Matthew 15 verses 21 through to 28. Jesus left that place, Genesaret, and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. What do you make of that, eh? What do you make of it? Well, here's what one person made of it. Jesus was a racist, nationalistic bigot. A woman comes to him in need and he refuses to help her because he thinks his race is superior to hers. He adds insult to injury by calling her a dog, a serious slur in his day. If he was trying to test her, he is doing so at the moment of her greatest need. How cruel and callous can you get? In the end, he has to learn from her that there is a better way. If even Jesus was a racist, then you can see how deep-seated this problem is. Some of you may be shocked and offended. Others will be thinking, yeah, well, there's some truth in that. The thing is that... We're all looking at this through a 21st century lens. And one of the things that I observe that we're caught up in, all of us almost in some way or another, is that we're living in an age of offence and grievance. We're looking for opportunities always to be offended or to be aggrieved at people that don't see things the way we do. Either this is a picture, another picture of woke socialism or a picture of authoritarian fascism, depending on your bent and the way in which you approach it. Let's just lay all of it aside and look for a few moments at the narrative and perhaps as it might have been experienced in the first century. Jesus is in Tyre. It's on the coast. It's at the kind of far north of Israel's territory. It's the borderlands between that and what's further to the north. There's mixed peoples here. It's some Jewish people, but also Canaanites, Syrophoenician, Greeks. There's a whole mixture of people living up here. But why is Jesus here? Well, Matthew doesn't tell us. But the clear inference from Mark's gospel, the way I read it anyway, is that he just wants time out. He wants to be here and to have nobody to know that he's here. He's been through a lot recently. We've spoken before, he's just been confronted by the brutal and ugly execution of John the Baptist. And what that's meant for Jesus in terms of having to step up in a new way. Of his feeding the 5,000 plus of all these people who, in the light of John's death, have now come seeking after Jesus. Of his walking on the water and then ministering to a huge crowd at Genesaret. 
And then if you've just read the first part of this chapter, fending off the self-righteous and entitled religious Jewish leaders. Even Jesus needs a break. The people that probably fit the description that we read at the beginning, people who thought they were better, and Jesus just needs a break. Even Jesus gets tired. Even Jesus, in his physicality, gets overwhelmed. And so here he is in Tyre. But there's a Gentile woman present who hears that he's come. She's of Syrophoenician background. She's described in Matthew's Gospel as a Canaanite. And surely it was the Canaanites who were driven out of the land when Moses and Joshua and the people of Israel returned to the land. They were the enemy. They were the heathen. They were beyond the pale. And they had no claim on Jesus. The disciples recognized that. that they had, she had no claim on Jesus, on any of them. They just wanted her gone. It actually does show how deep the cultural mm, antipathy was. Yep. This woman, we discover, is quite different. She's quite different from the Jewish religious leaders. She's quite different even from the disciples. She has no sense of entitlement, no sense of superiority, no sense of grievance, and she's unwilling to take offense. She knew no claim on Jesus, yet she came. She came in her need. She came in humility. She's willing to tolerate, even to embrace any insult. And she comes in faith. Confident, absolutely confident that Jesus could heal her daughter. There's a wholesome, gentle lovingness about this woman who just wants Jesus to do for her what she knows he can do. As I said, there's no sense of offense or grievance. She is gentle, respectful, and persistent. She hears Jesus' first back, pushback, which was mainly meant for the disciples. I've come, I've been sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And there's a sense here that Jesus has been clear about his call. He's articulating why he came. There's a sense that there's only one of him to go around. So we need to be laser focused. And she gets that. She gets that. I'm sure she does. But she's also aware that he's here and she's here. So she's going to ask anyway. Because if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So she asks. She asks and keeps on asking. She seeks and keeps on seeking. She knocks and keeps on knocking. Isn't that what Jesus said we were to do? And here she is, instinctively, intuitively, lovingly doing it. There's a message here for all of us, isn't there? We don't always immediately get what we want or what we need. So she persists. She will not be put off. Now then Jesus makes a remark that on the surface seems highly offensive. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, he says. Yet she's not offended. She will not be denied. She continues to call him Lord. Yes, Lord, she says. She knows that he can heal her daughter. She will not put off. But wait, there's more. Because she has listened carefully to what he said. She knows the way that Jews regard such as her. 
dogs of the Gentiles. But no insult is going to put her off. And in the implied insult is actually a grace, which she seizes and uses as a lever. The word for dog is kiwon. They are often large, mangy, street scavengers that don't actually belong to anyone. That was the word that is usually used, the kiwon of the Gentiles, of the goyim the heathen. But Jesus doesn't use that word. He uses the word kunarion. And it actually refers to a household pet. It's a house dog. It's a dog that is a member of the family. Usually a bit smaller, I'd imagine, a kind of like a, a lap dog. And she boldly, yet gently states her claim, Yes, Lord, yet even the dog Zecurion, the house dog, eats the crumbs that fall from their master's table. I can imagine the smile that this brought to Jesus' lips and eyes. Hmm. Your request, he says, is granted. And what we see is Jesus is stepping out of what would have been a culturally conditioned box. He's also stepping beyond that initial sense of call because there's something greater and deeper that is tugging at him. He reaches out in love and generosity and grace. And he responds to courage because there's an element of courage here in this woman with grace. He responds to respect with respect. He responds to faith with faithfulness, to love with love. There is no one who was beyond the asking, beyond the seeking, beyond the knocking for love for kindness, for forgiveness of Jesus. No one. Amen. God bless you.